what model lathe are you using and do you ever wish it was larger? This is a Wave Co. I can't remember the exact model number. It's on my website. I got part numbers and a panoramic view of all my shop equipment on there if you're interested. But so this one is too small for a lot of stuff. Like for instance, I need to take off this last outer groove here, cut it off. And, and this chuck isn't big enough to clamp down on this part. So I would have to make some kind of fixture and bolt this to it, which is time consuming. So. Then to dial this pulley in nice and centered on this lathe, I got it in neutral so I can just spin it over by hand. And then I got this dial indicator on here. I'll leave a link below for this. It's called a Noga arm. It's a magnetic base arm that you can clamp dial indicators to. It's really nice. It's kind of hard to see here the way I have it set up. But... So I'm taking off this outer groove and just keeping the back one. So I'm dialing right here on the part I want to keep. And then you just spin it by hand. And when that needle raises, that means that the part is coming towards you. So all you gotta do is just find a high spot. Right about there. And then, you know, it's just lightly clamped in the jaws. Then you just give it little taps. Keep going around and a little bit high right there. And you're never gonna get a part like this perfect, you know, it's just, I think it's just stamped steel that's formed. Just get it as close as you can. And that surface has a pretty good amount of rust on it, so it's, you know, it's gonna be chattering around a lot, but. So within a couple thousandths, that's good enough. And then gradually tighten up the chuck more and more, and then spin it and keep checking it, make sure it doesn't torque off. Then once you're satisfied with that, crank it down real tight, and then just flip the switch on the magnetic base and pull this out of the way. this where you're going to break through a thin material you want to take really light cuts when you get close to going through the whole way so it doesn't tear into the part and bind on you just be patient with it getting pretty warm. This machine has flood coolant, but I usually don't use it. Less messy without it. If you were doing like a production run, a CNC, you know, this is a CNC machine too. If you were doing production run parts, I'd probably run coolant, you know, on aluminum stuff, but not this. sense to use on this, but oh well.
Okay, nice and easy now that it's starting to come off. I got my foot on the emergency brake too. switch the cutter out for this one so I can chamfer it. And then normally you want these cutters in as tight as you can so there's less hang out and flex, but it's hard to get a good video angle with it in this far, so I'm gonna bring it out a little bit. This backside edge is gnarly too, so I'll come in and touch that up. Got some pretty decent chatter marks because this is such a thin part, so I'm gonna come back and sand those down the easy way. That groove's pretty rusty, so I'm gonna try to hand sand it out with these little Scotch Bright Roll Lock wheels. Careful where you put your hands. The reason I'm using this instead of just a scotch Bright pad is this is a lot stiffer so I can apply more pressure. And I can't get in there with the actual grinder thing because it's got a backer pad on it that's too big to fit in there comfortably. Okay, good enough. I left a little bit more thickness up here than on this side. Better to have it a little too thick than too thin. On to the next one. Thanks for watching. This pulley is a lot easier to set up because I can put it on this way and just clamp from the inside out in here. Don't even have to dial it in. You just butt it up against this face right here. And stuff like this. I used to work in a mechanic shop with a brake lathe, and when you had parts that were chattering. One way to get the chatter to minim be minimized is you can wrap a rubber belt around wherever you're not cutting to help dampen it. Sometimes that helps. Before cutting through that groove the whole way, I'm gonna change the tool out and look for a V1 and chamfer it real quick. And now back to the little lathe to touch up the edge. Okay, thanks for watching Lathe Day. I'll leave a link below for this Noga Arma I was talking about. This thing's great.